Hey everybody, thanks for joining me today for another video devotion. Today I want to talk about what happens when life doesn't go the way you planned. I think it's safe to say that we've all experienced our plans being changed in 2020, right? We had plans and they were changed. Planned events, planned vacations, all changed. How our kids went to school, changed in an instant. A lot of change happened. That's been out of our control. We didn't plan to endure a global epidemic. We didn't plan to be under a stay at home for 15 days. Oh, I mean, another 30 days. We didn't plan a crash course and homeschooling. Most of us had never even heard of Zoom. We didn't plan to do a lot of things, but here we are. I think a lesson that we can take from 2020 is that God can allow things in our life that wreck our plans, and yet he is still good. Our lives may look different than we planned, but he knows the full story. We can make plans, and we should, but we have to be flexible when God allows something to happen in our lives that changes those plans. The Bible says in 1 John 5, verses 14 and 15, that when we pray according to God's will, then the answers come. We pray a prayer, and God says, that's exactly in line with what I want to do. And we form a partnership with God, and God grants our request. The attitude must become, Lord, thy will be done. This is what I want, but thy will be done. Like Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Lord, if it's possible to let this cup pass from me, but nevertheless, thy will be done. So let's apply this to our life in a practical way. Let's talk about my plans. Do I include God in my plans? Which of these words best describe your attitude? Presumption or cooperation? Do you make plans about what you're going to do without even consulting God? Or do you get up in the morning and say, well, this is what I'll do today. Many Christians do that. They're like practical atheists. They live as if God were not in control. And that's why there's so much frustration in our lives. When we check in with God and we ask, God, what is your will for my life? We understand and we ask God for wisdom. We've been talking about that. Then life is so much smoother and satisfying and fulfilling instead of frustrating. Now, God rarely gives us the next 10 steps of his plan. So how do you know when to move forward in life? When you think God is leading you down a path, you start moving in that direction. You plan toward and take steps toward where you think he is leading you. Just be ready to be flexible when your presumed plan that was taking you one way and God actually, you, he leads you in a different way because he had something else in, in mind. Another area, my problems. Do I look for God's purpose in my problems or do I throw a pity party? Instead of asking, why me? Ask, what do you want me to learn? And maybe we won't actually see the purpose at this point that may come later. Maybe God just wants us to trust him, to trust him without question, to trust his goodness and his graciousness and his control. If we lost everything like Job, how would we respond? Would we have the maturity of faith to say, the Lord gave and the Lord took away? Blessed be the name of the Lord. If he wants to restore it, he can. What about our prayer life? Do I take advantage of the privilege of prayer? Instead of complaining about our problems, why don't we try to pray about our problems? Instead of worrying about our finances, why don't we try praying about our finances? We'll have a lot less to worry about 
instead of giving up on my marriage, why don't we pray about our marriage? These things are beyond our control, but they are not beyond God's control. There is no attitude that is more comforting to the Christian than the attribute of God called his sovereignty. God is in control. God knows how to turn bad into good, how to bring a purpose out of a problem. Don't waste your problems. Give them to God instead. When we're worried sick, we say, God is in control. When we're defeated and discouraged and we feel like a total failure, we say, God is in control. When we're sick and flat on our back, we say, God is in control. When we're standing by the casket and we're wondering, why at this time? We say, God is in control. He's a good God. And we read the headlines about a worldwide chaos. We can say, but God, God is in control. When we face a problem that we can't get a handle on, we can't get our mind around, we just have to cry out to ourselves. We're not in control. God is the one who's in control. No matter what you're going through today or in the future, God is in control. Listen, as your pastor, I pray for you. I pray for you to trust God. I want you to know I love you. I hope you have a great week this week.